in the following question we're going to find the lattice energy of agbr and the way you're going to do that is by drawing a born haber cycle uh, there's some information that is already provided and that's the first ionization energy of silver which is 731 the electron affinity of bromine which is minus 325 enthalpy change of atomization of silver is also given and enthalpy change of atomization of bromine is known and you're given the enthalpy change of formation of agbr so let's start with the enthalpy change of formation of AGBr, which is that one mole of AGBr, which is an ionic solid, is formed from its constituent elements, and the elements need to be in the standard state. So it's going to be formed from silver, which is a solid, and it's going to be formed by uh, by bromine, which is going to be in liquid state and. Uh, half br2 would be used because uh, there's only one bromine in the product remember enthalpy of formation is when you keep the product one mole one mole of product is formed from its constituent elements so so bromine has to be multiplied by half the coefficient is going to be half uh, so this is enthalpy of formation that's uh, the energy change of this reaction is the enthalpy of formation of agbr so that's one thing that's one path and now I'm going to try and create another path, uh, and I'm going to create a Born-Haber cycle, or a, or in simple terms, a Hess cycle. I'm going to go from silver solid and bromine liquid, and stepwise I'm going to try and make AGBr solid. Hess law states that energy changes in one path are going to be the same as the energy changes of the other path. So let's start creating this other path now, and uh, I'm going to start off with the atomizing silver first uh, so I have AG solid and I'm going to change uh, silver solid metal into silver gaseous atoms uh, nothing is changing for bromine so that is as it is so bromine br2 liquid so this is the part where uh, the metallic bonds in silver are going to be first broken and all the silver atoms are going to be changed into gaseous state and this is uh, this path, this arrow over here represents the enthalpy change of atomization of silver. So this is delta H atomization of Ag. Now in the next step, I have a Br2 molecule in liquid state. Now I need bromine atoms because I need bromine atoms to make AgBr. So, so I'm going to break the bonds in bromine. And uh, uh, so for making, uh, so Ag is as it is. Silver in gaseous state, gaseous atoms, uh, scattered gaseous atoms, and bromine is changed into bromine gaseous atoms. So, so it's in liquid state. I'm going to separate all the atoms. Uh, so I'm going to make them into scattered atoms, into gaseous atoms. So bonds would be broken. And this is the enthalpy change of atomization. This arrow is the enthalpy change of atomization of bromine. So one mole of gaseous bromine is formed from its constituent elements. And uh, the enthalpy change of atomization of bromine is given. It's plus uh, 112. So this here represents the enthalpy change of atomization of uh, bromine. So we get one mole of bromine atoms. Now in the next stage, I have uh, silver gaseous atoms now and bromine gaseous atoms. To form AGBr, I need uh, ions. I don't need silver gaseous atom, I don't need bromine, I need Br minus one, I need silver plus one. So I'm going to ionize silver. What I'm going to do is uh, Ag would lose electrons, so it's going to form a plus one ion, still in gaseous state. Uh, nothing happens to bromine, bromine is, uh, is simply gaseous atom, and silver would lose an electron, so one electron is lost. So this is the first ionization energy of silver with silver gaseous atoms lose one electrons, one mole of electrons to form one mole of plus one ions. So silver plus one is formed. So this is the first ionization energy of Ag. And in the next step, uh, bromine is gaseous. Uh, I need to form Br minus one. So this electron loss would be gained by bromine. So if bromine gains that electron silver is already plus one so not changing that that is as it is br on the other hand now ends up gaining an electron and becomes a minus one gaseous ion so this path over here represents the electron affinity of bromine with bromine gaseous atoms 
end up gaining an electron. And the last part that I'm drawing over here is your lattice enthalpy. So this here is your lattice enthalpy. This is the part, part, uh, part uh, or path that whose energy needs to be calculated. Uh, lattice enthalpy is when gaseous ions get together to form a solid ionic lattice, one mole of solid ionic lattice. So this is gaseous ions getting together to form one mole of solid ionic lattice. So this is lattice enthalpy. And this is the only thing that is unknown. All the other values are already provided. So I'm going to start filling in the values now. Uh, for example, the first ionization energy of silver is uh, known that's 731. So this uh, path over here is 731. You have the enthalpy of atomization of bromine over here, which is 112. So this is... Uh, 1112 kilojoules per mole and you also have the enthalpy change of atomization of silver which is uh, 285 so it's 285 kilojoules per per mole uh, then you have the enthalpy change of formation of agbr is also known so this is also known this is minus 100 and what's uh, there's one last thing which is the electron affinity of bromine so that's also given that's uh, given as minus it's given as minus 3 25 so this is given as minus 325 so all the values in this born able cycle are known except for lattice enthalpy so we just need to find lattice enthalpy Hess law states that one path the energy changes of one path are the same as the energy changes of the other path so, so I'm going to select this path over here enthalpy of formation and the other path is this path all going all the way so these two parts, the one in the red and the one in orange, they, their energy changes would be equal. So I just need to uh, make an equation now. So I'm going to start constructing an equation now. So enthalpy of formation is minus 100. And that would be equal to all this other path over here, all the energy changes of this path. So it's going to be 285 first, plus it's going to be 112. Then you have 731, after that you have minus 325, and then you have your lattice enthalpy, so let's write that as Le. Now I'm going to try and solve this for lattice enthalpy, what I need to do is I need to make lattice enthalpy the subject of the equation. Remember to do this calculation very, very carefully and always double check because a lot of students get this calculation wrong. Even when you've done the hard part, just putting these values in the calculator seems to be a very tough ask. And a lot of students, they end up getting the negative and positive signs wrong. Eventually, the value of the lattice enthalpy comes out to be incorrect. So always, always, when you're doing this final calculation, always double check. So uh, let's try and solve this for lattice enthalpy. Now I'm going to try and do that on my calculator. And the answer is going to be... It is... Um, minus 903 kilojoules per mole so that's my final answer and one way to check whether the answer is correct is lattice enthalpy is always going to be exothermic so the sign should always be negative and the value of lattice enthalpy would always be somewhere around 1000 to 3000 or 4000 so um, and especially if it's a weak lattice uh, for example, AgBr is a weak lattice. Ag plus 1 and Br minus 1 would not have a very strong attraction. Plus 1 and minus 1 don't have a lot of attraction. So, uh, so the lattice would probably, if it's, if it's forming, it's not going to release a lot of energy. So minus 903 looks pretty much correct. So always double check your calculations and always uh, check your answer whether it's logically correct or not. It's always going to be exothermic. It's always going to be around 1000 or 3000 somewhere around that range